vlog about uh, cosplay evolution in my terms, my personal like little cosplay journey. Uh, it, it's a bit of kind of a tutorial, uh, a little bit, where I'm definitely gonna cover talk topics like um, makeup, costumes, and like the different wigs I tried, um, and where I got the stuff, and all the links will be in the bio. But some of the stuff is just really easy to find on Amazon. Uh, most of it I got actually got on Amazon, luckily. Some of it you can just get at Walmart. Um, some of it you really can't. And then some of it, well, it, it's some of it's just really expensive. The cosplay I'm gonna cover today is James Potter. James went through a few phases. Uh, the, the, his origins are a little bit, I wouldn't say interesting. I kind of just did him one day for, um, uh, Halloween and then uh, for a student project and then I never really did them for a few years till this year where I really got into Harry Potter again and I was like, huh, I want to do James. Let's do James. And my friend um, wanted to do Lily and uh, Remus and a, a few other characters as well. So we started to look around and put them together and I used resources I already had. So his first look. All right, so his first like costume was essentially a, a, a white button up and a tie, jeans and Converse. Uh, I already had a wig for Percy that I was using at the time. So I used that for James and I wore like glasses I actually happened to have. So for his wig, it was a kind of like a bowl cut at the time and uh, I thought that looked great and I look back at it now and I'm like, mm. but I know exactly where to find it and that will be down in the description. I'm going to say this a lot. I'm very sorry if you get very annoyed by it. Uh, that's generally the thing. The button up I kind of got from uh, a, co a previous cosplay I had um, and then a tie I got at, like, a, at a costume store really. They're... Um, it depends where you buy them, but they can be cheap and they can kind of be a little more on the expensive side for a tie. It, it was a nice tie. I do need, it's old now, so I need to actually sew it uh, because it's falling apart. So version two, uh, which it was this year, late last year, uh, I started doing them. And I, again, I used a Percy wig I, I was using. Um, and it didn't look great. It's just, I was already looking for another wig at the time, but I'll get into that later. Uh, and then for his glasses, I actually have his glasses uh, currently. So I bought these for Pidge. Um, I bought them off Amazon. They are very dusty at the moment. Um, and they worked really well. I use them currently for him. I use them currently for him. And they are very nice. They are non-prescription. Um, I obviously need prescriptions, so I was kind of blind in these, but I do have contacts, so they work okay when I'm wearing contacts. They do hurt your eyes a little bit because they kind of act like magnifying glasses a little bit. Uh, with your eyes, I've noticed they make them look bigger. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then same thing with the other th stuff, except I was wearing like these really nice black pants I own um, that were professional, quote unquote. And then I never really took them outside. I never took them to a convention or anything like that, or I never really filled with them. Uh, at that point, he was kind of like in a middle child. No, not middle child. Like an awkward teenage tween phase at that point. Keep in mind, I'm not mentioning the makeup to the very end because the makeup for these dudes were basically the same. Uh, the only thing that changed was the lip. I like, when I first started cosplaying dudes in general, I put like, foundation or concealer all over my lip and but like too much you're supposed to do it to bail out your lips and that does work but you need to be very nicely sparing because like then you just look like you have no lips and it's it looks kind of weird for like a book character like that unless it specifically kind of says something like that so the wig i used for the middle child version is over here just let me go get it <laughs> freeze I forgot to mention something. So you're probably wondering why you're not seeing the first wig in this video. It's because it's a bunch of wefts in a bag and I forgot to film that part. So please enjoy me babbling about the second wig and basically babbling throughout the rest of the vlog. Have fun. So this is the second wig I used for James. 
Uh, the nice thing about it was that I could do this and um, it just kind of would stick up and stay like that. Though I would kind of frame it to my face, obviously. Um, the bad thing was it just didn't frame my face the way I liked it. Uh, that's all up to personal preference, honestly. Uh, wigs, like interpretations uh, in wigs are like a thing with me uh, personally. So I really liked the kind of like floof, but I wasn't really getting the floof with this thing. But it's I, I found this on Amazon for really cheap. Um, I, and I saw, and there's pictures and stuff for it. So I was like, oh, okay, this is a good wig. It's cheap and so on and so forth. Uh, so now to move on to the current version of him. Um, not to say that he won't change. I know I'm very um, finicky when it comes to cosplays. I usually tend to change them within, within a few years to uh, keep them the way I like them. Sometimes I, I don't, but usually I have a tendency to. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to grab the costume pieces for my current cosplay. I'll be right back. So this uh, are the current pieces to my current uh, James cosplay. I tend to roll up his sleeves, um, though this one decided to roll itself. This is a, a shirt I got from, it's the same shirt I used for the very first one and I use this button up for any really button up sort of thing I for him. Um, again, the pitch glasses and the Gryffindor tie, which I, I got at a costume store. <sighs> well, if it would be nice. Um, these things can go a little more on the expensive side. They, but you, I'm, I'm guessing you can find one on Amazon for really cheap. Um, this thing is actually kind of falling apart. It used to have a little thing to keep the small part of the tie in place, but that fell off and now it's just it's just hanging the other side of it's falling apart so i'm i'm not gonna replace it but i'm definitely gonna like rescue it by, with the sewing kit um i will explain why the collar is kind of, i don't know if you can see it but it's kind of black in the back which i didn't notice till i pulled it out which is interesting uh to me but i know exactly why it's like that also a little tip when you put on makeup don't don't, don't wear your button up yet because the uh, foundation will stay there and I haven't been able, this gone through the wash a few times and it still hasn't been able to get, get off. So I'm going to show you another piece that was added on to him uh, along with this. The, oh, so a little story behind this. This is actually a birthday gift. It was part of just like, kind of like a whole gift sort of thing that was all Harry Potter themed and this was part of it. The other part I will show you in a second. Um, it was quite expensive, but that's also partially because we went to Universal Orlando, so we went to Pot Potterworld. Um, and yeah, so I'll show you that in a minute. So when we went to Potterworld, I wanted to get her a Harry Potter wand for her birthday because we have really close birthdays. Um, and I was looking around and she asked if I wanted one and I obviously said yes. Um, and so I got Harry Potter's wand and I used this for James. I just think it's a, like, it's it was really expensive. So obviously we're not gonna get like two of them. She got herself one and I got her one. Um, well, no, I got her one and she got me one. Um, but it's a very nice wand. It's nicely crafted. Um, it was perfect for our video that we recently did. Uh, actually, that was, I wanna say the day, it was like a day or so after we got this. Um, we got our wand, so that was a nice little like prop if you want a Harry Potter prop. Um, you don't really need this. It is worth getting if you do have the money and you would like to splurge on yourself a little bit. Um, but yeah, and then his wig, which is, a Again, a whole nother story within itself because I don't know why uh, current James tends to like have just a lot of history right now. I I don't know why it he just does. So so I'm gonna show you his wig. Uh, just give me another two seconds. D D. So this is James's current wig. It smells, <laughs> um, but. That's because of what I did this. So if you see this picture right here, this is actually what James's wig looked like when I first got it. I got it off of Amazon. 
again, um, most things you can find for Harry Potter is on Amazon uh, I, for a lot of reasons. Um, so as you can see, it was blonde uh, and that's not ideal for this character. It was a very nice wig. I really like love the packaging it came in, but like it, it, it needed to be a different color. So I've actually bought this with the intent of uh, dyeing it. I never really bought this for a different character or anything like that. Uh, like the previous wigs, so I just, I always look around for a different wig, but it tends to kind of get recycled into other characters as well. This wig was dyed with uh, acrylic and isopropyl alcohol, 70% uh, 70, 70 isopropyl alcohol. Uh, the thing with that is you have to be very careful of how much the uh, rubbing alcohol you put into it. Uh, into the spray bottle because I use also a spray bottle if you, as you can see me working in the sun uh, I live in a very hot climate and it uh, it started drying up very quickly uh, which wasn't ideal also little tip you gloves like you can buy them for like hmm, I want to say like I bought them for like 88 cents at Walmart and they lasted me the whole time I did this it took me two days to do this um, you gotta keep in mind, well, I didn't really do it that much, but I did a little bit with the roots. Um, if I can find, because I was very meticulous. I used both, actually, I used both Sharpie and um, the method I'm showing you here. Um, oh, perfect. So you gotta keep in mind, if you can see here, it is blonde. It is very blonde. So I didn't put enough in to the extent of where I sprayed it. It didn't spread out very quickly. It had to work very quickly too. Um, to enable to get it on. I'm just making sure this doesn't get on my fingers. So you basically spray it and it takes a while. Uh, I do suggest once it's dry, like if you touch it with your fingers and it doesn't run off your fingers, that you uh, run it under cold water um, because it will, it will color transfer, which is what happened to my nice white uh, button up and it actually happened to my forehead. I did run it under cold water, it just never really, um, it ran clear, so I just didn't think anything of it um, when I first initially put it in. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's that's how I got this wig. It's very nice, it's very fluffy, I, I can manipulate it easily, and it's nice in my face shape. As for my makeup, um, it was really easy, and I'm actually gonna show you what I usually do uh, with like just general male makeup. He's uh, He's a general young male makeup <laughs> um, uh, right about now. What's up everyone? I am forewarning you now. I am listening to musicals throughout this whole thing. So the first thing I do is put on my contacts. I tend to not know which eye the contact is in, so I tend to check as you will see. And it just passed. And I am also warning you I'm not good at voiceovers, so bear with me like the rest of the vlog. <laughs> The next thing I do, this is the me problem, I take off my bracelets and my ring, uh, and then I put on my wig cap. I have very floofy hair, uh, it's nice and thick, so I sometimes actually wear two wig caps or I just pin it down like I do here. The next thing I'll do is put on foundation. It's the first thing I'll do for my makeup. I don't put on primer, I know I should, but I don't. Um, I will cover all my red areas and pale my lips. I know I said earlier in the video I do not like doing that, but you'll see uh, something new I'm trying and in terms of lips, so I do it anyway. Okay, and then the next thing I'll do is I'll blend it in. Keep in mind I am using my viewfinder as a mirror at the moment. Uh, later in the video I actually grab a real mirror. Um, I did not want to block my face so you guys could actually see what the heck I'm doing. Uh, since it's so quick, but it was a half hour of footage. I think it was actually almost an hour of footage. So You don't want to sit there and watch that. You'd rather watch like five minutes of me doing this. Make sure to cover your neck by the way The next thing you'll do is eyebrows or at least I'll do that My eyebrows are a story within itself, but I have no time within this video to tell you use black eyeshadow the downside and you can already see that like I already did my other eyebrow because they're not even they're never even they're sisters they're cousins not even sisters um don't do what I'm about to do which is let's see let's see where where do I do it right there you see on my temple yeah no I wiped that off real quick um <laughs> I didn't see it in the camera but I do in the mirror that's a problem oh I do it again I didn't even bother wiping it off when you see the next clip didn't even bother. 
but the next clip will also show you what I do with my eye line, um, or eyeliner. It's really brown eyeshadow as you just saw with the angle brush. Uh, I will just put that on, some people don't, I do. I like to make my eyes pop a little bit, even if I'm doing a dude. Um, I don't know why. To me, my eyes kind of go non-existent as soon as I put it on foundation, but that's a me thing. I always wear eyeliner anyway, so. Now make sure to contour your cheeks. That's This is the most important step, personally. Uh, I use a flattish angled brush, and then I'll contour my nose with the same flattish angle brush. Make sure to contour your eyebrow bone as well, as it will make it more pronounced. And then I'll use a small fluffy brush uh, to blend out everything on my nose and then I will do my jaw. I don't know why I did this out of order. Usually I do my big face things first, but I don't know. And then I'll use a small fluffy brush to highlight everything because highlighting is key to bring out your cheekbones and nose. And the next thing I'll do is use a copper color on my eyelids and under my eyes a little bit. Uh, just really the corners of your eyes to make them pop a bit. And then the next thing I'll do is use a pink, very, very pink uh, lipstick. It's going to look very, very vibrant before it gets very, very pale. Next part I forgot to show you is I use a, a kind of pinkish red lip uh, color in my inner lips and blend it out with my finger. Um, and then I used a napkin again to kind of wipe off any like outliers in there. And then I use foundation on the outer sides of my lip um, to kind of make it smaller. And then I went all over my lip mostly to kind of pale it out and make the colors less uh, pronounced. Pronounce, yes. And after I'm done with my lips, that's basically it for the makeup. It's really simple. Uh, and then the next thing I'll show you is me putting on the tie very quickly. You can find many tutorials on it. I did the Windsor knot, I believe. Uh, I'll put uh, the link to that above. Uh, and then I put on my vest and my wig, which you will see in two secs. So the thing about wigs is they have hooks uh, that help you adjust them to your head. You should also put your wig on back and then front first uh, and adjust it with your fingers. As you can see, I am floofing and now I put on my glasses and I'm going to pose for you in like two seconds. So see you in two seconds. So yeah, this is what James looks like when he's all done. Uh, for me, at least, there's a billion interpretations of how he should look in terms of uh, cosplay because I've seen many different things. Excuse me, because you see what I'm doing, right? I've already mentioned it. Um, and uh, yeah, so excuse me, loves. I have some uh, spells to study. So goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful vlog. And um, see you next time. Don't talk about